Hey guys, um, this is looking like it's going to be our last official lecture of vet assisting. Um, after this point, I'll pull up the learning guide or learning packet. Um, today, we're going to be finishing up the PowerPoint. Um, you are going to continue slash finish unit 10 of your 4 ACT account on radiology. Friday, I'm going to post some school net questions, and after that, y'all just need to work through completing your four ACT accounts. Um, we'll be officially done with material, so y'all just work on your four ACT accounts. Um, let me know if y'all have any questions about it, if there's anything that I can help you guys with, anything that we need to straighten out, go over. Um, but as of right now, this is going to be our last official lecture, unless there's something that y'all want me to go over. Um, pulling up the PowerPoint. PowerPoint and everything should be on Edmodo so that y'all can go through and review it. Um, last lecture was a little bit confusing just because I had to kind of like cut it in half. Otherwise, we, because basically our options were to have like two regular appropriate size length lectures or to have one really long one. Um, so after viewing this lecture, I do recommend that y'all go back and watch yesterday's lecture because some of the stuff we were talking about like film cassettes. We're going to explain what film cassettes are because for whatever reason, the material does not go in an order that necessarily makes sense. Um, so I would recommend going back and looking at the last lecture that can help answer some questions and your 4ACT account will also go into more detail of the stuff that we're going over today. Um, so just jumping in, um, equipment, important things to keep when it comes to radiology. The first thing is the radiology log, um, which required by law you're doing x-rays, you gotta have an x-ray log, a radiology log that says um, when you did the x-ray, the owner's name, the patient's name, where you took the x-ray, um, and kind of the dosage, I guess, if that's what we want to call it, of the x-ray machine. Um, it's important for just keeping records, knowing when x-rays are happening, why x-rays are happening. You can go back and look at them. Um, just really good record keeping practices and they are required. Um, okay, basically it. When you, okay, so I'll back up for a second. Um, when it comes to figuring out what the KVP and MA are going to be. You have to measure the animal with calipers. These are calipers. It's kind of like a ruler with, I don't, I don't really want to call it teeth, but kind of like teeth, like a mouth. And you can adjust the calipers to measure out whatever it is that you're going to be taking an x-ray of. If you're going to take an x-ray of this dog's abdomen, then you're going to put the calipers from the bottom of their ribs for however they're gonna be laying. If this is how the animal is gonna be laying on the x-ray bed, then you're gonna measure from the bottom up here because that is how far that x-ray, the x-rays have to be able to penetrate if you wanna get a good x-ray. After you measure it out and the calipers measure in centimeters, um, after you measure out the thickness of that body part, it could be the leg, it could be the abdomen, it could be the rear end, like whatever it is that you're measuring in centimeters, then we're going to have, I'll get back for just a second, um, from the previous PowerPoint, you have this chart that says the thickness, if that dog has an abdomen that is 14 inches thick, and then we're going to come over here to the abdomen, and you're going to adjust the KVP to be 70 and the MA to be 15. And that is going to be your best setting for you to get the best x-ray quality. Um, yeah, calipers are really important. You can have calipers that 
you measure manually or some of them are electronic where as you move the mouth open, it will tell you exactly like to the thousandth place what the centimeter is so that you can get the best reading on what you need to set the x-ray machine to. When you're taking an x-ray, you have to be able to identify the film. So typically it's gonna be somewhere up top over here. So it's gonna have all the information that you need to know about this x-ray, basically. Um, what animal hospital is it from? So if you, so basically that's really important for if one animal goes to one hospital and then maybe they move and they go get x-rays taken in another hospital down the road, the vet's probably gonna wanna be able to look at those x-rays and maybe kind of compare. So they can send over those x-rays and they know exactly where they're coming from. Um, it'll have, it should have the vet's name up there, who did it. So um, Heather Becker, I think if I'm reading that, I'm sitting outside so the sun's kind of on my computer. Um, the x-ray number, um, x-ray number is really important for like filing x-rays. If you're keeping them in a numerical system, then you're going to need that x-ray number so you can figure out where does this x-ray go and if you need to find it what number do i need to look for to be able to find it um the client's name the patient's name the date that the x-ray was done and the directional label um all these things are really important you can have more information out there like this has how old the dog is um what breed the dog is the sex of the dog. Um, you like, there's a ton of information that you can have up there, but these are just some of the main pieces that you want to have on your x-ray. After you take the x-ray, you do have to develop the x-rays. It's not like you just take them and it just oh, pops out. It's not, not necessarily really like a printer where you hit print and everything comes out perfectly. Um, there's two ways that you can develop the film. Um, you can do it manually or automatic. Um, so if this is our dark room, then these would be, this could be our processing tank. So this is gonna be where when the lights go off and it's dark, you are gonna process the film so that you can get the images. You can get whatever the x-ray has. Um, we're gonna get into like more what is concerned with manual versus automatic, but this slide is just kind of like the pros versus cons. Very general information. Manual, it's done by hand. You, there's different tanks and you have to put the film into each different tank for a certain amount of time to try to get the x-ray image to come up. This one takes longer, but it's less expensive because you're doing it by hand. You don't have to worry about a machine doing it. Automatic, done by a machine. It is more expensive because it's a machine. Machines tend to be more expensive, but it is going to be quicker and the quality does tend to be better because you can kind of streamline how you want the x-rays done. The machine isn't going to forget that it has an x-ray in it. So the quality is going to tend to be better because you can set exactly how you want things done in that machine and the machine should do it. Um, so film cassettes, we talked briefly about film cassettes. Film cassette, it kind of reminds me of like a laptop box, or like a really, really skinny briefcase, and it holds the x-ray film. Um, it closes really, really tightly to make sure that there's no light getting to the film, because if the film is exposed to light, done. It's done. You're not going to get anything but like a black screen, a black picture, when you go to try to expose that film. Um, and you should handle it with care. Um, it can be fragile, not fragile, but sensitive. I think sensitive is a better word for it. Um, when you're processing the film, you're gonna hang it on a film hanger. Typically this is for when you manually do it, um, where it has these little clips, two at the top, two at the bottom, you're gonna clip them together. And then up here is what you hold on to. If you're manually doing the film, you have these tanks that you have to dump the film in. So you're gonna take it, you're gonna dunk it in. It might sit there, you might have to like pull it up, check it out, move it around, pick it up, move it to the next one. Um, this is so that you, you're not just like 
kind of like bobbing for apples where you're just having to like stick your hand down there and try to find the film. It's going to stay perfectly flat so that it gets equally exposed to the chemicals and then so that you can grab it without having to get it on you. So manually developing it, you have these different tanks. Um, typically it's going to be three tanks and then you're going to have like a rinse. Um, so the first tank you've got your developer solution, you put it in, it kind of develops the film, it doesn't, it stays in here for a couple of minutes. Um, then you've got the fixer solution in the middle, and then you've got the wash tank, which will rid the chemical or rid the film of chemicals. So we're going to watch this video. Um, we'll walk through how to manually do extra film. There we go. Let me rewind it now. <laughs>
Obviously, we didn't really get to see any film being developed, but we did get to see the process of it. So that's really helpful. Um, all things considered, this is a pretty good video because I can't really teach you guys how to develop x-ray film. Um, with automatic film processing, you don't have all those different tanks where you have to go in, dung, you got your 5, 2, 10, 1, 1, da, 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 da. Um, you would insert it into this machine, and it's going to do it all right here. You're going to insert it in the feed. It's going to go through. It's going to hit the developer. Ooh, whoops. It's going to hit the developer, the fixer, the washer. Then it's going to come through here and do the drying chamber, and it's going to pop right out. All good to go. So it's a lot easier, but this machine has a lot going on. So it's going to be an ex expensive machine to get. Um, then kind of our third option is digital radiography. And this one, I can't even imagine how expensive this is. Um, because with digital radiography, essentially as soon as the x-ray is taken, it jumps right over to this computer. No processing, no exposure. It just pops up clear as day, typically in a better quality for the vet to be able to see and interpret. Um, filing film, you basically do it in the same way as like medical records. Um, you can do it alphabetically, you can do it numerically, uh, just about however the clinic stores medical records, you're probably gonna do the same thing when it comes to storing x-ray film. And lastly, dark room care. Um, dark room, it's very dark. We saw that guy flip off the lights. It's, it was pitch black in there. When I first watched the video, I really thought he was going to develop film. We weren't going to be able to see a single thing happening. And I was like, I don't know about this one. Um, the dark room, it should be clutter-free. It should be clean because it's dark in there. You kick something that's not supposed to be in there, you're going to trip and you might fall on something that you don't need to be falling on. Um, should be free of any light leaks. You shouldn't have any like light coming under the door. Definitely shouldn't have any windows or anything. Um, none of that. You're supposed to be dark. It should be dark. Um, unexposed film should be placed on the counter with a metal object on the film. This is kind of like the purpose of the cassette. It holds the film until it is ready to be processed. Um, that's basically it. So we're all done. Um, Y'all need to go to your online 4ACT account. So the link is right here. Log in, do unit 10 diagnostic imaging, um, and just work through that. Tomorrow, or not tomorrow, but next class, we are going to have, I'm going to be posting school net questions from this unit for y'all to go through and y'all to answer. Um, oh, excuse me. <laughs> This is basically it, and I'm really sad that we're having to end the year this way, but hopefully I will get to see you guys soon. Um, it was really good to see y'all at Cap and Gown Pickup or Senior Sign Pickup. Take it easy. Um, try not to stress too much, but good luck. Hopefully I'll see you guys soon so we can get ready for this exam whenever everything calms down. Um, I'll have to let you guys know. But let me know what it is I can help you guys with every Tuesday and Thursday, 1 to 1.30. I've got Zoom lunch. So if y'all want to hop on there just to say hi, I would appreciate it. I love seeing you guys. Um, but hopefully, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Bye, y'all.